28th of February and today I'm going to be sowing some seeds and looking at some uh, compost I've been supplied by a local company and also talk a little bit about uh, a bit of a project I've got coming up that um, we'll be following throughout the year. So uh, first of all we'll have a quick look at this compost. Um, this compost has been supplied by a local company to me in, in Preston um, which is called Scrivens Landscape Supplies. Uh, they deliver nationwide you know it's um it, it is green waste you know and some people you know can uh you know kind of dislike it but um i think i think it's fine you know um it's like anything obviously some of you will know i had problems with compost a few years ago and that was from a, a branded company so um it looks fine like i say you know it's just time will tell like when you buy anything you know time, time will tell so I'll put a link for the website in the description below and also there'll be a discount code. But they deliver nationwide in in bulk bags, small bags, you know, and on, on, on pallets. Obviously, so it's handy, you know, if there's a few of you together and you want to get a bulk load, you can get a big bulk load delivered to you. And it's in bags, you can put them in the boots of your car, take them down to your plots or, you know, even in your gardens. You know, if there's a few of you that know each other and you want to get a bulk load between you, it is a, a very affordable way to do it, you know, compared to some of the... Uh, the composts in the bigger stores and garden centres are they're just getting so expensive now. I and mean, obviously they've gone peat free, so it's more sustainable. Um, but it's hiked the price up, you know, and it's it's not as good a quality as it used to be compost, you know. Um, but this is um, this is good stuff. This I like, I like the feel of it. You know, and it's great for putting through a sieve. You know, I got a bucket full. I sieved it before. You know, I just got that amount out of a 10 litre bucket and I've had it before where I've had um, compost I've been sieving it and dragging it through trying to get it through and it's chunks of wood and glass and all sorts in it but uh, no, this is good stuff by the look of it you know, it feels all right it's not going to dry out I don't think to, and it's not going to waterlog it's, I can see, there's little twigs in it and everything so I'm going to I'm going to sow the sweet peas in that I'm also going to be using my, my own compost. But like I say, if you want to uh, have a look at the website or get any compost, all the information will be in the description below. You can uh, get in touch with the, uh, the company and, and you know, if you want to place an order. And um, I don't know how long the discount, um, discount code will last, but, uh, but yeah, I should have set it up at their end of the middle. And uh, if you get some, you'll get some discount. So I'm going to sell me um, Hilda's Mix Sweet Peas in that. And um, I've I'll probably do my brassicas in some of my own compost and probably a bit of rocket as well. Um, but we'll do sweet peas first. So I'm just going to do uh, a 40, 40 cell tray. You can sow them direct or do a few in a small pot. Um, but yeah, to load trays up, there's no real set method. You just fling it on. You know, it's been put through a 6 mil sieve, this. No, it's, probably more, it's probably more like an 8 mil sieve. Um, which, you know, sweet pea seeds are quite uh, quite big anyway. I soaked them overnight so they, they plumped up a bit. Just speeds the germination up a little bit. You know, and all I tend to, you can, you know, depends on the compost. You know, if it's really flaky stuff, you might need to press it down a bit, but when it's got a bit of weight to it, you can kind of just, just drop it like that and that causes a bit of like natural settlement. It will drop and that's fine, you know, and. And I'm going to use uh, probably a Sharpie, because uh, they're a fairly big seed. I'm just going to dip them down, probably one and a half centimetres. You know, because I will uh, second load this tray when I've dropped them all in. So I'll be doing two trays of these. Because they do look nice. And a lot of people have had them off me this year as well, the seeds. So uh, it probably was going to be my last one, but I'll see how things are at the end of the year. And I might give some more away next season. But, uh, yeah, I've got, I, enjoy, I enjoy seeing them in summertime. It just reminds me of my mum. Not difficult to grow at all. Not that bothered about their soil environment. As long as they've got the sunshine. And they attract that many sort of insects, especially hoverflies and things like that, and bees, because uh, they're good for the garden. That's all them dibbed out, so I'll just get myself some seeds. And 
Now, obviously, there's some they're all different colours these are going to be, so it's tempting to sort of, I'll just go for the bigger ones, but you'll end up probably with uh, a lot the same, so just sort of randomly dropping them in. Some will get two in, some will get one, but be fine. You know, I'll probably plant these out once they get about, you know, um, once they start to put like these little tendrils out, that little curly bits, and that's what they used to latch onto things. So as soon as they start putting them out, I'll, uh, I'll plant them out. Because I don't like putting them out too early because where they do go, it doesn't get sun really there until uh, into April. That's 40 of them. I'll bring it back over to here. I'll just simply just sprinkle it over the top. Give it all a wipe over like that. Nothing fancy at all. Put it back on there. Get it pat down. You know, because some compost, if they're quite you know, light and fluffy and very fibrous, um, you might need to press them down because sometimes it can fall apart on you when you try and, try and pull them out, but this stuff's pretty, yeah. Uh, got a bit of weight behind it. And just uh, use the um, world's fastest watering can. A bit of water. But sometimes, you know, well, a lot of the time I tend to uh, just sit the tray in some water, you know, for five minutes or so, or until I see it go dark on top, so it'll just soak up just enough what it needs. I'll just give it another. A quick go over, and these probably won't get watered again unless if they go really dry. But uh, weeks probably won't even water them before they come through. So that's that's as simple as that for your sweet peas, you know. And uh, they, you know, they, they'll flower for months and months when they come up. Put them down there, aren't they? And I'll pop them on the windowsill in the house until. Probably half of them have started to just come through um, because the windowsill I've got isn't like south facing, um, it's getting north facing really, but it, it gets light. But it, you can end up with leggy plants on a windowsill if you're not too, you know, if, you, if they get too warm and not enough light and too much water, they will, um, they'll just bolt and it looks like cress and, and uh, it's basically uh, it needs too much life to support that stem and they just end up toppling over. I think what we'll do next is some of the uh, some of the brassicas. Um, I've got some trays loaded somewhere if I can find them. Um, here we are. Well, so I've, uh, I've loaded these up. Got one more to load up, so I'll show you how I do that. Put that on there for now. This is just uh, homemade compost, just kitchen scraps, um, vermiculite in it. Um, it's, it seems to work so far. So all I do is um, basically get one of these strips. I get them from uh, get them online. They're made by a company called Stewart's. I just basically load it like that, give it a little shake, take any excess off, and then get another one of these and just press it down, not too far or you know too hard, but because it's a, a bigger area, it's not like it's going to cause it to go down too far or compact it's still soft and then what I like to do with things like that is um, I much prefer when I'm sowing seeds like the brassicas and everything is water beforehand just find my water and can so yeah I was thinking before this is me my, my tenth year as a YouTube gardener, even though my channel's a little bit older, it was my 10th year as a YouTube gardener. Um, so years have gone that quick. But it's, it's still nice to see people who've uh, supported the channel right from day one, commenting. Um, you know, there are ways you can, you know, support the channel, which are all in the description below. You know, if you're going to donate or buy me a brew, because everything that I get goes it goes back into the channel to allow me to sort of do these tests and trials. Um, so any any support is much appreciated. But all all the all the information's in the description below. I can uh, 
support the channel. Right, so I'll get a bit of wood again. So I'm not trying to keep it as tidy as I can. But there's not a lot of room in this polytunnel at the moment because it's, uh, it's pretty overrun. I will be doing some uh, some potatoes. Probably in the next video I'll, I'll do that. Just do something in tubs. Which again, you know, it's, it's like using the compost like this. Um, it's from Scrivens. Um, it's some of the some of the other brands are just a bit too expensive now to, to justify growing them in tubs. I've got here got uh, some Clapton cauliflower. I was going to do uh, Sapporo, but they didn't have any seeds at the time. I did them last year, Sapporo, and uh, yeah, I like them. There's 20 seeds in each pack, so I usually grow quite a lot of. Uh, cauliflower so I know I can get uh, at least 24 in a bed in the plot so I'll probably do I'll, uh, I'll order some more seeds which will end up being me uh, you know if I need any backups for these or for me later season sowings because I always sow another batch around May because these these I'll be harvesting these in probably anywhere between a sort of around 100 110 days time I'll be harvesting these you know and they won't even go up to the allotment till April so they'll be in these for probably two or three weeks and they get pricked out into little tiny pots, um, which are pretty small, they're sort of this sort of size pot. I prick them out into this sort of size and they stay in them until I get them up to the plot. Unless if it's really cold and I have to hold back, then I will pot them on again. But it's just they like to be potted down quite deep. Um, once you get the, the first true leaves, you know, then you can sort of think, right, now you know how far to pot them down. So I'll just put a, a label in that. Clapton. I managed to find my sharpie because I'm, I'm a bugger for losing them. Um, cabbage, golden acre. Not going to do as many of these. Because it's. It, it's a nice little heart cabbage, providing the slugs leave it alone. Um, because that way then you get to uh, make coleslaws in the summertime, because that's usually one of the first ones that's ready, kind of June, that'll be ready. So that's uh, Golden Acre or Primo too. Next brassica is, uh, what have we got here? We've got... Uh, a quills, probably my favourite calabrese. It's just an early broccoli, really. Um, seed suppliers, there's plenty out there. You know, you don't have to use the same ones. I tend to use, you know, if I can, the more I can get off one site, the better. You know, obviously if you've got uh, delivery charges and stuff like that, if you can get the bulk off. Uh, one online store, then great. I do try like different varieties, usually my later sowings, but once you sort of work out what does well for you, stick with it until you find something that's like, mm, right, I think I'll give that a whirl. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Uh, I'll try and just get it all done in one. So that's the quills. What else have we got here? We've got some uh, Durham early, which is uh, a spring green. So I'll probably uh, use a bit of this stuff and separate the thing so there. Uh, I'll split that in half, I think. So yeah, I just grow the Durham Earlies um, 
as a spring green or is it just a green you know um, it's perfectly tortoise but you know I started eating them quite a bit as well they just had me you know, some cabbage leaves ready to go and that and you usually get plenty of seeds I mean there's what is uh, I can tell you but there's a good few hundred seeds in there anyway probably 500 I don't know why though, sometimes my me, me, me tortoise who I mainly grow them for it gets a bit picky in the um, spring we've got rigoletto which is uh, a bit like a savoy cabbage, an early savoy and I've grown it the last few years and it stands for ages you know it, it's sort of like when I sow this now I can start harvesting it from June probably or mid June and it'll end up staying firm and standing well right through till probably September. You know, and you can do a later so on if you want, you know, probably May time. Last one, I've got some uh, lettuce I grew last year, if you remember, called uh, uh, Valen. It's just a cost lettuce, really, a bit like a little gem. But uh, they were nice and compact, and they are cold hardy as well. I've got many seeds of this, so I might as well do the lot, because when you've got a tortoise, it uh, will quite happily eat two or three lettuce a day. I just can't keep up with him. You know, and you can plant them pretty close, you can put them like eight inches apart in all directions when they're done. That's that. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to put compost over them, just sieve it over. Get some of this junk out of the way. It's got like a, a small sieve, just one of them, I think it's probably about four mil, something like that. And there. Uh, You know, so they're all going to be, you know, about five mil underneath. Say, so, because you, you, your seeds really are not too bothered, they're not too fussy at all. I'll just probably lightly water them now just to make sure it's all in. Good contact. I'll put a little propagating lid on them and they'll be uh, they'll be fine. Just need a quick look over because obviously once you've got a lid on it it kind of humidifies in there and the moisture sort of travels throughout. It's always better to go a little bit less on the water than too much. Like I say as long as the bulk of the water's underneath them they're not sat in it. All this top bit does is kind of um, gets rid of the little air pockets a little bit. You know, so that's pretty much uh, quite a few, well, a, few, a good few of my raised beds at the allotment. That'll fill. Right, what else have we got then? We've got uh, spring onions. 
yeah, I'll do a few spring onions. So with spring onions, um, what I sometimes do is if you get trays like this that are a bit, you know, they're, they're a bit past the best, don't throw them away because you can uh, you can trim them up. You know, so say like what's that? Uh, three. Right, so there's nothing wrong with using that bit, isn't it wrong at all? And I'll uh, probably use a bit of this other compost really. So that be fine. for the spring onions. You can use your finger if you want. That's all that uh, dumped down. Got a little uh, wooden dibber. You could dib it probably a centimetre down. Um, they will take a little bit longer spring onions to come up and they don't mind a little bit more water because they're quite a hard seed a bit deep some of them but never mind I'm not sure how many seeds I've got in here but they shall work. the idea is he's kind of sold them in little clusters You know, like well, five or six. Probably about like eight, ten going in each one, but my man. You just plant them like four or six inches apart when you put them out. Once you get about four inches on top they're ready to go out what I'll do because they're uh, some of them are a bit deeper I'll just instead of filling it up I'll uh, just push the compost down that's uh, in there just to fill the holes in bang down that's all and then I'll just uh, I'll give it a water well actually I'll give it a bit more on these I'll probably give it a 10 minute soak from the bottom as well that's the spring onions I'll do some, uh, do some rocket now. Um, the options are like, you know, if you haven't got old seed trays and stuff, just get a mushroom on it, put some holes in the bottom of it, get yourself a little zip seal bag, get yourself some compost. They're quite high these ponnets, so you don't have to fill it all the way up. Oh, I'll, do, I'll, mix. I'll do a little mix. A handful of meal in there as well. It's only like, you know, halfway down, so there's only like an inch and a bit of compost in there, really. Not pressing it too hard either, I'm just sort of. Uh, just tamp it just to try and get it a bit more level. Put some more water in the watering can. Because rocket seeds are pretty small. It, it's um 
I think the uh, varieties armor says or something. It's a bit like a wild rocket, you know, which uh, doesn't mind the cold weather either. I'll just give that a good old watering. You could actually, the seeds out small, you could get away with just actually putting it on top and not covering them, but I usually do uh, like to just put a little bit of cover on. And just find my seeds for they are. Yeah, Artemis. And just give them a, a right good scattering. Sieve again. Put that on there. You don't need much to cover these at all. You just want it so as long as you can't see any seeds. That's good enough. Label, label that one. Label down at an angle. All right, so get your get your uh, zip seal bag. I mean, there's always uh, a way. I'll just stay in there. You know, you can put a straw in, or sometimes I'll just sort of open it up a little bit. Just let some air out every couple of days and reinflate it, and then just pop that on your windowsill. And you know, it gives them a bit of growing height, and then when they're big enough, you can brick them out into the trays, and they're hard enough to be without on the dam, really. That's the that's rocket. I think that's all the sewing there's going to be for today. Um, but it's a start. Yeah, you know, some of the uh, onions, I, I pricked some of them out. I've got some leftovers here of other ones with some old seeds, so I put them in as a backup. So remember, right, they started off in little uh, trays like this, and it was just simply like, you know, get a little twig. Push it in the under the bottom like that. Pull it out and you get your little see your little little root underneath there. And then I use the 40 cell module tray. And then just simply just dip the hole using the uh, wooden dibber. That's what it's handy for, it's just that bottom bit there. Push that straight in. So I don't I don't compact the compost down, I just fill them because it's fluffy. And then when you dip it, it, it does it. So that's the Santero. So you know, there are uh, quite a few. I've got five trays of onions, um, but we have plenty of onions here anyway. And you've just got to keep an eye on the water and just keep them just, just moist because I don't want to damp them off. If they get too wet, they can damp off. Um, I've also got like a, an old broken tray I've cut as well. Garlic isn't really doing anything. There's nothing, nothing showing on, on top as such, you know, but uh, they're all, uh, they're all still going. I say you can see there's a, root poking out the bottom there on that one you know there's I'd say I've got quite a lot of garlic and it should be fine there's more roots coming out but there'll be the odd one you know as you feel down there'll be like a little uh, little tip appearing yeah there is on that I can feel that a little hard bit in the middle the little green tips start to appear on that which is, is totally fine. I don't expect the garlic to be rocketing away. It's too busy doing its roots at the moment. Another thing I tried doing this year as well um, is I've got some tea bags. Because I was a bit bored. I just basically tip the tea leaves out of them. Because obviously they're full of tannin, you know, tannins and that. You know, wash them out a bit. And then uh, I just tip the tea leaves out. Because they go in the compost bin. But I kept the bag. I just filled the bag up with compost. Um, with a little bit of tea mixed in as well, like just so I thought, well, might as well try it. It's high in nitrogen, so as long as it's not enough to burn. And um, it'll work a little bit like peat pockets. As long as you make sure your tea bags are biodegradable. Um, so you end up with like a little tea bag. That's a little cabbage, that. You know, I don't know where you can see at the bottom there. You know, the roots are growing through it. So you can just plant that whole thing in the ground. Just, it's just another way you can save a few quid, you know, if you know pots or anything, 
get your old tea bags throw the tea in your compost heap and keep the tea bag put some compost in it it's a little bit time consuming but if you put telly on or listen to the radio you can knock up 20 or 30 in no time you know and just you can just let them dry out and they will soak up again if you leave them like a couple of hours just sat in some water they'll they'll gradually you know soak it up i've got a, a lawn mower there that i can use it should i need to but um yeah it's definitely a just an idea i thought oh let's just do it another way so like i said just make sure your tea bags are biodegradable which you can find out online anyway um because my they do rot down they just take a little bit longer so i end up with them like wispy bits floating around top of the soil when I've been raking it around. Right, this uh, other project I've got uh, coming up. Um, obviously, I, I need to uh, get in touch with like B and Q and find out what they're going to uh, want me to test out for them this year. Um, they're just waiting for a, a new range of things to come in, and I can go down and have a look, see what's what. Um, but I've been sent um, some metal raised beds. I'm going to be trying out for a company. So I've had a little bit of an adjustment up the top of the garden and um, they're going to be in the next video. I'm just waiting for a, a day where it's a little bit better outside and I'll be doing a full build of one and um, they'll be getting filled as well. Um, not planted yet because I always think if you're going to fill a bed it needs a bit of time to settle. Um, the main thing it's going to be filled with is the, uh, the compost that uh, Scrivens have supplied. I'm going to be doing a, probably a mix of compost and topsoil because sometimes compost on its own it can dry out a bit so it needs you know there's no substitute for soil you know the compost will feed the soil um, but obviously you want a good mix of soil organic matter sort of thing whether it's manure or compost it, it all gets mixed the worms coming in so if I make the raised beds fill it and everything it gets time then to settle down and for all the um microbes to, to sort of migrate from the soil into it worms as well so i might put a bit a little bit of like um kitchen scraps at the bottom of the bed just to sort of make it a bit more enticing to get the worms up in there because they're they're the ones that will spread it all around and they, they, you know they'll move it all through the layers you know you, i will mix it up but you, you could probably just layer build it and the worms will do the rest for you but um so obviously when i do that there'll be uh discount codes for that as well in case you want any of the beds because they are uh, they are good they have a 20 year guarantee and everything so they'll be in the next video which will be coming up probably hopefully next week um weather permitting and then we'll be sowing some more and pricking out so it all begins now really so the next sort of you know february march april uh, it gets pretty busy you know and and everything's planted up really by the middle of april and then it's time to sort your frost tender stuff out then so I don't, I, I don't sow my tomatoes this early really now. I tend to just uh, get nearer to the end of February and I'll sow them because it's just too cold. So it, it doesn't matter if you, if, you, if you get caught out and a frost nips your, uh, your seedlings, just sow some more. It's, they, they will catch up. Um, you know, but if you haven't got a polysaur or a greenhouse, I'd, I'd just hold fire till March anyway. And just if you've got somewhere that's fairly sunny and sheltered in the garden, that you could just, I don't know, put something like a, a piece of perspex and lean it to. It acts like a bit of a, a bit of a coal frame. You know, there, there are ways, because um, you don't need loads of room to grow a lot of food, you know, um, whether it's in pots or, you know, little mini raised beds or, or whatever, you know, whatever space you've got, fill a plant or like I always say, if you don't plant something, nature will, whether it's grass or weeds. So you get the, you get to, you do get to choose which you prefer. So uh, on that note, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. See you now. Bye-bye.